from the headquarters of Telesur English in Quito, Ecuador. I'm Carla Gonzalez and this is From the South. Today in Venezuela is the inauguration of President Nicolás Maduro, who will begin his new mandate for 2019-2025. International dignitaries have arrived in the country for the ceremony. Bolivia's President Evo Morales also received an honorary degree in the capital of Caracas. Morales was acknowledged for his leadership in the region and for his solidarity with Venezuela. Upon arrival, Morales was greeted by Venezuelan officials. Minutes later, he talked about his support for the Venezuelan government, in particular against U.S. interventionism and the importance of the revolutionary processes across Latin America. We have a historic responsibility to defend our democratic processes, our revolutionary processes, revolutions based on voting and the will of our people. It saddens me to see that imperial powers are still trying to make us fight with each other, be it with Bolivians, Latin Americans, Venezuelans. But as a people, we have the obligation to defend our independence, our sovereignty. So we salute this revolutionary people, the children of Bolivar, the children of Chavez. We have come to defend our liberation. Overnight, the president of Nicaragua, Daniel Ortega, arrived in Venezuela and was received by Planning Minister Ricardo Menendez. President Ortega expressed gratitude for the chance to visit the homeland of Chavez to participate in this special day. All of our love for the heroic people of Venezuela. I'm pleased to be in this free nation, the homeland of Bolivar, the homeland of Chavez, which today is being liberated. Representatives of Caribbean governments are also in Venezuela for Maduro's inauguration. The president of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Ralph Gonzalez, praised the Bolivarian Revolution and condemned the attempts of destabilization. The, the Bolivarian Revolution has come about through consensual means, electoral means. There have been 24 electorates. The Bolivarians have lost one in a referendum. Mm -hmm. Every other election, they won. What can you tell me about that fact when you want to have regime change? There are difficulties in Venezuela, there are challenges. And the way imperialism is acting, it is acting in a manner which is subversive of the interests of the people of Venezuela and their activities among the unwarranted interference in the internal affairs of an independent country, contrary to international law and all civilized international norms. I congratulate President Maduro. Tomorrow is going to be an excellent day in the start of a new chapter and I want to wish the government and people of Venezuela going forward all the, the very best. Significant work is needed as we lift production and productivity. As the Minister of Agriculture here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, through the Petro Career Program, we were able to establish a farmer support company with the assistance of the government and people of Venezuela. And you can follow the story in end of Nicolás Maduro here on Telesur English. And stay tuned for extended coverage of today's events as the president begins his new term. Panamanian experts assure that international relations are being manipulated to benefit big powers like the United States. They state that Panama's participation in the so-called Lima Group is a symptom of this. Panama's foreign ministry has been harshly criticized for serving U.S.-aligned interests. Former President Varela implemented policies that are far from the alleged neutral Panamanian position, a tradition of dialogue that our country has had throughout history. Now we serve North American foreign policies. Panama, as a member of the Lima Group, tries to isolate Venezuela, 
This is a far cry from Panama's historically neutral stance. Panama has done a lot throughout history, and it's not good for us as a nation to accept this. This even helps divide our country. When it comes to the Israel-Palestine conflict, Panama was one of the few countries that voted against Palestine being recognized as a state. Panama has also remained silent on the many human rights violations. Panama has aligned itself with these kinds of policies, and we can see how the government makes statements on certain countries but remains silent about others. However, when Panama remains quiet, it means that we are accepting crimes against humanity and injustice taking place in other parts of the world, such as Palestine and Yemen. Panamanian social movements are still fighting to defend sovereignty and independence, not just for the country, but for their Latin American brothers and sisters. In other news, celebrations have taken place in the Democratic Republic of Congo as the opposition leader won the elections. Supporters of the winner Felix Shisekedi took to the streets of the capital and the city of Goma to celebrate his victory. Shisekedi will be the first leader to take power through elections since the prime minister took office following independence in 1960. We thank God and we thank President Kabila for his good faith. He's freed Congo. There you go. Today we are free. After a delay in revealing the results, the Electoral Commission of the Congo announced that Shisekedi received more than 7 million votes. Voter turnout in the election was under 48%. Mr. Shisekedi Shulombo has been provisionally elected as President of the Republic of Congo. The results detailed by candidates and the tallies are being transmitted to the Constitutional Court for any possible recourse within a two-day delay from this publication. The latter is in charge of publishing the definitive results in conformity with Article 72 and 74 of the electoral law. However, a contrasting tally compiled by the Catholic Church raises fears for the transition of power. The runner-up in the election, Martin Fayulu, has rejected the results. And meanwhile, President Joseph Kabila is set to step down in the coming days. We categorically reject the result published by Election Commission President Mr. Kulnei Nanga. May God Almighty bless the Congo. We have more stories coming up. We'll be back. Welcome back. In Guyana, the government and the opposition have reached an agreement regarding the no-confidence vote against the ruling coalition. Both parties discuss general and local elections, as well as the functioning of the National Assembly and the government. President David Granger provided an update after the one-hour-long meeting with the opposition leader, Barat Jagdeo. As you know, the government has had legal recourse to the courts in order to determine the validity of the vote in the National Assembly on the 21st of December. This is quite legitimate and there is no intention on the part of the government to derail the constitutional or legislative process. We have agreed that the two sides will continue to work together to engage GCOM to ensure that elections are held uh, within the administrative capabilities of the Guyana Elections Commission. I would say, in conclusion, that we've had a successful engagement. Both the lead of the opposition and the president are concerned about the situation. We would like to assure the public in Guyana that we are working to uh, a solution which they'll be satisfied with. The public interest is our paramount concern. Human rights groups in Guatemala have applauded the Constitutional Court for overturning the government's decision to expel a UN-backed anti-corruption mission from the country. Activists gather in front of the court to support the ruling and the work of the International Commission Against Impunity. Activists say the lack of governance and growing corruption have contributed to the increase in the number of people leaving Guatemala in hopes of a better future. 
Si, si, tiene que the International Commission Against Impunity has to return because it's clear the existence of an illegal body and clandestine security apparatus that is part of a mafia economic political network embedded in the places you've already seen and that have been self-confessed. Let's hear from our correspondent in Guatemala City, Mario Rosales, with more details. The Constitutional Court has announced a resolution to suspend the decision of President Jimmy Morales to end the agreement with the United Nations backed International Commission Against Impunity. Four judges voted in favor as the court's president, Dina Ochoa, voted against it. There are still questions of whether President Morales will follow the court's resolution, which allows the members of the UN Commission to continue investigating and working in the country. The commission was established in 2006 with the authority to to conduct independent investigations and work with the country's prosecutors. It has often clashed with Morales, whose National Convergence Front is close to military officers responsible for many human rights violations during the country's civil war. That was Mario Rosales from Guatemala. And now President Jimmy Morales will likely face legal actions for his decision to expel this commission. The Constitutional Court of Guatemala has presented legal actions against President Jimmy Morales after the agreement with the International Commission Against Impunity illegal. Legal experts say the president did not follow proper legal parameters to make such a decision. President Morales broke international public law because he didn't follow the Vienna Convention of Legal Rights and Treaties. He had 12 months to file a complaint and he did not fulfill the fundamental principles of this law. The Constitutional Court ordered Jimmy Morales to allow the UN Commission to continue with their investigation. Social leaders say he's disobeying the highest legal institution of the nation, which they consider to be a crime. No one is above the law. We must submit to the Constitution and to the legal system. We ask President Morales to reconsider the situation and not to continue sinking the country's sovereignty. In the country's recent history, no president has disobeyed a resolution from the Constitutional Court. In 2018, President Morales said he would allow the UN Commission to carry out an investigation until September 2019. Different social sectors think it's unreasonable to expel the commission before the established deadline. The law must be imperative, and that means that no one is above it. Even a president with popular support cannot break the constitution. We need boundaries. We can't break our legal system. Guatemala signed an agreement with the UN in 2006 to create an international commission against impunity to operate in the country. This is the first time that a commission investigated the family of a president, in this case, the family of Jimmy Morales. Peru's interim attorney general, Zoraida Avalos, has declared a state of emergency in the attorney general's office. This decision came on Tuesday, the same day the former attorney general, Pedro Chavarri, resigned from the post. Avalos said this measure is meant to recover citizens' trust. She also gave her support to the prosecutors investigating the Odebrecht corruption case. Our correspondent Jaime Herrera has the latest on this. Zoraida Avalos was named interim attorney general after Pedro Chavarri resigned on Tuesday, and her first decision was to declare a state of emergency in the public ministry. On its part, Congressional is proposing a law to reform the Judiciary and Justice Council. This will determine how magistrates and Supreme Court judges are chosen, as well as the Attorney General. Currently, three out of five judges, part of the head judges from the Attorney General's office, are being investigated for corruption cases. It's important to mention that President Martin Vizcarra will address the nation regarding the latest events. People are expecting Congress to approve the judiciary's reform. Meanwhile, the Congress's president, Daniel Salaverri, has announced his resignation from the Popular Force Party, citing differences. Jaime Herrera from Peru. To other stories, gas stations in some parts of Mexico have run out of fuel as the government continues to fight fuel theft. The government has temporarily closed down some state pipelines in a bid to end with the theft that has cost the country an estimated $3 billion in 2017. People in Mexico City and central areas of the country spent hours waiting to fill up their tanks at the few stations that are still open. 
Meanwhile, the Mexican president has warned people to remain calm and refrain from panicking until the crackdown on fuel theft is wrapped up. Sería fácil. It would be easy to reopen the pipelines and say it is back to normal. But we would do that knowing that they are still stealing it. A Guarani community in Paraguay is camping in the capital city, Tansuncion, to protest after being evicted from their territory. They blame Brazilian businessmen who, according to them, have taken over their land. Families of the Mbia Guarani community known as Takwari are camping in the middle of Asuncion. They have been protesting for three months, asking the government to give them their territory back. But the government of Mario Abdo Benitez hasn't helped them until now. We are fighting for our ancestral lands. We were evicted from our lands. Men hired by Brazilian businessmen did this. They also killed one of our leaders, Isodoro Barrios. His body wasn't even returned. This happened five months ago. The government hasn't done anything. According to official figures, 76% of indigenous people in the country live in extreme poverty. Many move to the city in search of basic services and help that the state is not providing in their territories. They say we are violent. They say that because we are defending our rights, because we are not taking more injustice. Are you now no? They cannot remain silent. We need to defend our rights. The Guarani community was expelled from the country's border with Brazil, an area that has seen an increase of soya monocultures. A special report from the Olo Nos Pluralistas Observatory has shown that 14% of indigenous territories are in the hands of Brazilian businessmen. These people think they own Paraguay. They don't respect our state authorities. The attorney general who should defend us and our rights hasn't done anything for us, not even politicians or judges. We are dying because we have no support. The families that are camping in Asuncion say they want to return to their territory. They also announced they will reach out to other community groups to ask them to support their protests. After being converted into a bookstore, a 100-year-old theater in the Argentine capital of Buenos Aires has become an unlikely tourist destination. Having opened in, the in 1919, the Grand Splendid has hosted tango dancing, plays and cinema. It was said to be destroyed in the 90s, but after an extensive restoration process, the old theater has been brought back to its former glory. Now millions visit this bookstore. The mayor of the Colombian city of Medellin has said there will be no bullfighting in the city this year. Federico Gutierrez said that he respects those who enjoy the event, but that he stays away from it. The decision was taken for animal welfare reasons. In Medellin, we've been working towards animal well-being and will continue to do so. There will be no bullfighting season in Medellin. And in the west of Colombia, the famous Blacks and Whites Carnival has come to an end in the city of Pasto. On the final day of the festival, guinea pigs play a central role. Even though they may be well looked after and even dressed up, they end up on the grill. As many as 7,000 guinea pigs were eaten during this year's festival. Ya que el roedor es el plato típico de la región. Más de 7,000 cuyes fueron colebra aquí cada año. We're taking one last break, but stay with us. Welcome back. Mexican President Andrés Manuel López Obrador has said that promoting development in Mexico and Central America is the best way to confront the migratory crisis gripping the region. The wall is part of the migratory problem, but we want to solve the migration problem by attacking the causes. What we've proposed has been made very clear. We are persuading and convincing the government of the United States that the best thing is for the development of Central American countries and of Mexico. 
that there be productive activity in jobs in Central America and in our country, that migration be made optional, not obligatory. That's our stance. But then there are those who want us to fight. We want to find a relationship that is always friendly with the government of the United States. U.S. President Donald Trump has stormed out of a meeting with Democratic congressional leaders in the White House. He did so after they refused to support funding for the U.S.-Mexico border. Posting on his Twitter account, Trump called it a total waste of time, saying the meeting with Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer was yet another failed attempt to end with the government shutdown. These will leave some 800,000 federal workers without pay this week for the first time since the shutdown began. Meanwhile, the Democrats have accused President Trump of using a U.S. citizen, U.S. citizens as hostage in his quest to build the border wall. And he said, you, if I open up the government, you won't do what I want. That's cruel, that's callous, and that's using millions of innocent people as sort of pawns, and it was wrong. Uh, many pe uh, federal workers will not be receiving their paychecks, and what that means in their lives is tragic in terms of their credit rating, paying their mortgage, paying their rent, paying their car payment, paying their children's tuition and the rest. The president seems to be insensitive to that. Turkish Foreign Minister Mevlut Cavusoglu has requested the joint cooperation of Russia and Iran to ensure the withdrawal of U.S. troops from Syria. During a press conference in Ankara, Cavusoglu said that the withdrawal of the United States would, from Syria should be supervised by Turkey along with Russia and Iran, to prevent terrorist organizations from occupying the empty space. He added that the U.S. is having difficulties withdrawing from the Kurdish People's Protection Units because they are too committed. The United States is struggling to leave. It's not so easy to do so after dealing with the terrorist organizations. This is one of the difficulties that the United States is experiencing, but we see that there are different voices coming from different institutions. On the other hand, we want to coordinate this process with the leadership of our Western counterparts, and especially with Russia and Iran, with whom we have worked together since the Astana peace process. We don't want terrorist organizations to gain the benefits of that vacancy. People demanded French President Emmanuel Macron steps down during his visit to a new handball sports facility in the country. Demonstrators protested near the venue where the visit was taking place. Macron has been under increasing pressure from the Yellow Vest movement, which began in November last year in response to the government's decision to introduce annual increases to fuel taxes. I think that Macron keeps saying that he was elected and that he represents the French people, but he doesn't want to talk with us at all. That's one thing. On the other hand, he has sent his riot police and gendarmes to gas us, and I think that you have been gassed yourselves as well. Even though there were no incidents of violence, nothing happened. We were nice. We were nicely waiting for Macron to arrive. A baby penguin under the care of two same-sex couples in Australia has taken its first swimming lessons. The baby and its parents belong to the Sea Life Aquarium in Sydney. The foster parents, two male penguins, made headlines last year when aquarium staff gave them the egg following a successful trial. And with that happy news, we come to the end of this news brief. By this and many other stories, you can read them from our website at telesurenglish.net. For our viewers in Africa, we are on StarSat Channel 461 in South Africa and 539 in Nigeria. And we're on social media as well. For Telesur English, I'm Carla Gonzalez. Thank you for watching.